Welcome to my personal top 10 of fantasy European comics. And we are past the halfway point. And with that, made the choice just easier. Last time we talked about The Mercenary, a series I liked for its art style. The next is liked more for its characters and its grounded world. Heck, one can confuse it for a more serious medieval story at first glance. Written and drawn by the Frenchman Francis Borgirian, the Champions of the Dusk. A story that plays around the beginning of the 100 years war. There's a legend that at the beginning of time there were two, uh, three forces, black, white and red. But the black that was dead destroyed red and white that represented life. But in the real world they represent the grand bastard daughters of Hugo the Thirteenth, and were adored by its former old war partner. He honored his shield with the three colors of their hair. The eldest, Narelle, got the upper part, black. Carmina got red, and the youngest, Bayans, got white. Or in more heretic terms, Narelle got sable, Carmine Gules, Gules, oh, how you pronounce that, and Palance Blanche got Argent. But when Narel got in an argument with her uncle, he left remo removing the sable from the shield. Another knight came into the, their lives, a simple ves vessel with no royal blood, but had clear talent as he won tournament after tournament. Because of his low status he was hated by the court, but he piqued the interest of the three sisters, Bayans in particular. It was she that took care of him in secret after the knight got st stuck on the spores on, on the saddle and was dragged hours through the field. Well, and, well, the court laughed at him. He broke many bones and his face was disfigured. In the end, he became a mercenary leader. He had no power to fight it on the side against the friends, especially if it allowed him to besiege the castles of the nobles that once spurned him. A year ago, he took the castle of John Cotoy, the knight had planned to share the bed with, with his wife, who was Blanche, but his second and his men had killed her, piked her. And on to the knight, it was on the order of Carmine's husband, the Duke of Tournay, or at least that is what her oldest sister claims. As he slept, the knight was plagued by, by a nightmare, where the uncle pestered him that he had forgotten about the woman he loved. But Bla Blanche still had hold, hold hope that he would rescue her, that the knight unwillingly helped the black force and was rewarded, and, and in return was rewarded that it took the only one that he loved. He learned about the black force and the destruction of the two other colors to almost nothingness. And that he should go on a quest to unite the tree once more. When he woke up eight days later, talk about the beauty sleep. Well, he needed it. His men were gone and the body of the ones he once loved was spread of decay and the blood had washed away from by the rain. Underneath her were two horses, a big stallion that that he would later name Big Horse and a mare named Ludi. And with them a shield that sported the two colours, Bruges and Argent. One year later, the daughter of a witch, Mariotte, showed a band of mercenaries the, the way to the f to a f to a farm that once bullied her, that recently bothered her, a thing her grandmother highly disapproved of, and ordered her to warn them at their approach. If she failed, she should never return to her, as she would be cursed, and cursed she was, as the inhabitants were were raped and murdered only for the last person that had bullied her. The he was strung up by a noose. 
The knight stumbled upon the aftermatch and rescued the young man from his own stupidity. As the young man, who was named Anishat, was a coward, he named him only a serf, and the two later captured Mar Mariotte after she tries to steal the rabbits that they tried to, that they tried to pouch. And so, she became the second the knight got up, got off from a, from the noose. Although he favored Mariotte more, because she looked like Brian Blanche. As they traveled, the horses on bear trampled the huts of kobolds and were captured in the only realm they could be her could be harmed, the realm of dreams. Kobolds in this world in this world are like ugly, furless cat like humanoids. Their kin are often enslaved by the Duriger, who are reptile like monsters with rape rapist tendencies created by the black force of all. As they battle the creatures, they are well aided by a blue duger, the last of his kind, that were wiped out, that were wiped out by their masters for being too free thinking. The first two books had its fancy elements, at least in the dream world, and the knight of the lament. He should have become a bard, as he clearly had enough imagination. The last book, or books, as it's almost twice the, uh, twice the length, sadly tones down on the fantasy. There is a werewolf, but there's nothing more than just a mur murderous pilgrim. And the knight is reunited with two remaining sisters. In the end, Nerel betrays the knight and her own sister, who will be buried a, who will, who, who, so, who will be burned alive on the stake. Mariotte and her new friends will be, bur will be buried alive. Well, Aniset, ironically, gets the news. Both Marinette and Aniset manage to escape, though. Only Aniset flees on horseback, but the horse startles and is out of, contr and out of control. Runs, runs toward the crowd where the burning should happen. The people recognize him, thinking as the square he's trying to save his master. If the knight if the knight yells that he is free and should run. But like I said, the young man has lost control of the horse and surrendering should also be sure that in an action everyone else would see as bravery. The, cow the coward resigns of his fate, drew his sword, charged, and died. The pyre is lit, and as the night burns, the crowd, the duke, and Nirel are trampled to death by a stampede of cattle controlled by death itself, only for her city to be plundered and plagued. Nothing remained. Mariotta and her friends laid a claim to have seen the knight as he is followed by the reunited three sisters and Aniset dressed as a hero and ending the line instead itself carrying the last book of the ancient religion this is more or less the full story but then again as it, as it has a lot of nudity as underwear or swingwear were not a thing at the time I don't see it being published in English very soon. I quite like the realistic tone of the series though. I give it a thick 9. Although I wish the companions stayed together longer, I left the demonic of the tree, the practical and borderline evil knight, the cowardly square and the naughty witch. That has a thing for young monks. Next time, at number 4, we go to a more heroic fantasy series, the beautiful and resourceful Arya.